Good morning. Welcome to the worship of our Lord here at Westminster Presbyterian Church. We are glad you are with us this morning. If you're worshiping here in person, you can um, add your name to the friendship pads and pass those down the pew. And if you have any prayer requests, those can be filled out on the paint cards and they'll be collected uh, during the second hymn. If you're worshiping with us online, those prayer requests can be put in the comments to be included in the prayers of the people. We have lots of announcements this morning, so I'll let people find their way to the front as they would like to make announcements. Um, I have one here from Chris Doe. Um, she would like to let you all know that Habitat for Humanity is um, of DeKalb is building a home in Malta, and they're looking for lunch providers for the build, specifically on September 3rd. Um, lunch would be for 15 people, and if anyone is interested or willing, uh, please contact Christo by Wednesday so they can um, get you all the information you need. Uh, today is our new members class. If you're interested in becoming a new member but haven't uh, had a chance to talk with us yet, I'm sure we can squeeze you in. And Blake has an announcement, and I'll let him do his. If you're an old member but you want to learn new things, you can come to the new member class today. And that will be at 11.30, and we will meet in uh, McKamey, which is the large classroom just past the main bathrooms. Uh, yes, Bob? <laughs> you would qualify easily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we're uh, going to have lunch at Jimmy John's uh, partway through, and uh, it should be a great time. Good morning. Um, on behalf of the deacons, I'd like to invite everybody to uh, the pork chop dinner, uh, to sign up for the pork chop dinner. Um, it's going to be held on September 25th, and um, we do need to have people sign up so we know how much food to order. Um, so if you want to be sure to do that, um, please do so in Knox Hall or call the church office. Um, we're looking forward to having as many people as possible. And as you can see, the rest of the deacons have joined me, so I'm going, or some of the deacons have joined me, so I'm going to hand this over to Carolyn. The deacon board has been changed. The parishes have been changed. We're not doing a territorial area for a parish. Now it's alphabetical. We thought it would be a whole lot easier to help people keep track of people that way. So we're going to announce the deacons that are here and the parish that they are in charge of. And I am Abraham Parish, and I will be the care deacon for the Oak Crest community. My name's Dina McKnight, and I am Anna Parish. A, B, C is my letter. Lynn O'Toole, I'm Deborah, so that would be D through G. Marge Roseberg, and I am H through J, Hannah. And my name is Kate Hartman, and I have the Noah Parish, so that's uh, people with the last names with the letters N, O, P, Q, and R. I'm Pat Barger, and I am with T Thomas Parish, and I'm T to Z. And then we'll just, uh, Joan, Cool okay. Joan Coolidge is the Leah Parish, and she has the letter L. D Diane Demers has K and M, and she is the Mary Parish. And Kathy Shuey is the letter S, and she has the Sarah Parish. So now you know which parish you're in, and it will always be alphabetical. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Let us continue in our worship by rising in body or in spirit to join in the call to worship. 
The Lord be with you. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Philippi saying, It is my prayer that you love may abound more and more, so that you may prove what is excellent and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Praise the Lord. In faith and in hope, turning to the rock of our salvation, let us confess our sins. Gracious God, we confess our reluctance to be transformed by the renewal of our hearts. We prefer the security of the familiar, even when it leads us to act in ways that are faithless and harmful. We resist your call to change, and we avoid knowing the truth of what we do and also the truth of what we fail to do. We erect barriers to your redeeming power within us and we grieve your Holy Spirit by our resistance to the one who makes all things new. When called to support our sisters and brothers in moments of transformation, too often we turn away, failing to freely share the love so freely given to us. Forgive us and make us into disciples that follow as you lead us into new life. And all God's people say.
The Lord is our hope and our trust, our light and our salvation. Believe in the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As people loved and forgiven, how are we to live? Hear the words of the prophet Micah. What does the Lord require of you? Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. Amen.
Now is the time in our service where we have a special message for the children of God. We are all called God's children, so we are all invited at this time to come forward if you would like, or anyone can. Good morning, you two. I'm going to come sit down here today, too. Good morning. How are you? Good. I'm glad you're here with us today. I think we have a few more coming. Come on up. Anywhere you'd like. Did everyone go back to school this week? Did you guys have a good first day of school, first week of school? No? Yes. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad everyone had a good first day of school. Hello, Miss Freya. Where would you like to sit? Right there? All right, so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about... You didn't go to school today? You go to school next week. Well, I will ask you next week how your first week of school was, okay? Sound good? So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what's on my stole. You know how Blake and I wear these stoles every Sunday? And this is one I like to wear. And let's see what it says. Maybe some of our big kids. Let's see this first one. Do. What's this word? you got to start down here and read up. Justice. It says do justice. Does anyone know what that means? Yeah. What does that mean? What does justice mean? Does anyone know? Justice means that we do what is right and we take care of people and that we treat people fairly, right? And then the next one says love mercy. And sometimes we say love mercy and sometimes we say love kindness. And so this means that we are kind to people. And then on this side it says and walk humbly with God, which means that we follow God and we are disciples of God. And so this is from a very specific book in the Bible called from uh, a prophet named Micah. And this is what he said God requires of us. God requires that we do justice, love mercy or kindness, and walk humbly with God. Does that sound like a hard thing to do? It's kind of a lot of things to do, right? But this is what is most important. And this church, we like this verse so much that it is hung up all over the church it's on our website, it's on pencils, it's on stickers, it's everywhere. It's our mission statement because this is what we believe is so important that we treat people fairly and kindly and make sure that people are taken care of and that we love God and we follow God with all our heart. Does that sound like something we can do? It's hard, it takes a lot of work, but every day we can practice treating people fairly and we can be kind to one another, right? with our brothers and sisters and siblings. Um, let's see, you know, it actually even has a date on it. It says 2017. It was a gift to me when I got ordained. So, but it was made out of um, burlap sack, so it looks a little bit older than it really is. It was reused. So let's say a little prayer and thank God for his words. God, we thank you for the prophet Micah who taught us to love kindness and do justice and to walk humbly with God. May we remember this each and every day and do what you require of us. Amen. All right. Well, I will see you guys next week. And if you are in kindergarten or below, you can go hang out with Miss Pooja in the nursery if you'd like. You can go back to your mom now. Thanks for coming up here. Not you. Okay. Let us unite in the prayer for illumination. O Lord our God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love that we may be obedient to your will and live always for your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Savior, Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the book of Micah. We read from chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? 
Would the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? If you have a prayer request, we ask that you hold the request up so that the ushers can collect it as we sing our next hymn. Let us pray. Be with us, gracious God, as we come to your word this day. Help, we, help us to understand its message and filled with its meaning. May we shape our lives in a way that please you. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. One of the staples of television is the courtroom drama. It shows up all the time, and if you've ever sat through courtroom and been uh, at trials, you know it's rarely exciting. Um, I really appreciate the fact that so few of you go to jail. Uh, it's always been a tough visit for me, but uh, it's something I'll continue to do, and I've sat through trials as folks have faced uh, penalties for what they've done. And most of the time it's very perfunctory, but sometimes it is dramatic. And we come in at the scene of a courtroom drama that the prophet delivers. Uh, this is actually a fairly common form of prophetic disputation. And if you'd back up to the beginning of that chapter, it starts with a word from the Lord. The Lord says, rise and plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice. He's talking about the witnesses to this event. Who is going to be part of the drama? Well, all the very hills are going to be there. The mountains, the foundations of the earth. And the Lord is going to bring a case against the people. And so the word from God in this, the testimony against the people goes like this. Oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. 
O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. God's case against the people includes some details about things that happened during the Exodus. At one point, uh, King Balak will send Balaam, son of Beor, to uh, put a curse on the people, but he's unable to curse them and instead blesses them. And the Lord reminds them of this event. And then he also reminds them of another important event. And this, is, again, is one of those details uh, where he talks about a place on the east side of the Jordan River and on the west side of the Jordan River. And it reminds them of the people crossing into the promised land. So that's what that reference is about from Shittim to Gilgal. Uh, and don't ask me which one's on the east and which one's on the west. I'm a little fuzzy on that, but I can get to the answer if you care. So the Lord has made the case against the people. And he says, listen, I did all these things for you. And now, what's, why is it that you have wearied of worshiping me? And so the people respond with this exaggerated claim. Well, what should I come before you, Lord? Will you take a bunch of burnt offerings with calves a year old? Or how about, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? It makes it seem like it's so hard. It's going to be so impossible to please God. It's going to take all this stuff. And then they finally even mention something as part of their defense that they know God doesn't require, and that is, shall I bring my firstborn? And, of course, that's not, not how it works in Israel. The nations all around them uh, were practiced in child sacrifice. So all of this is brought before the people, God has made the case. The people have responded with their defense. And now the prophet concludes with a reminder. He has told you, O oh mortal, uh, the word there for mortal, Adam, human, it refers to all the people of the earth. And of course, this is the same word that's used for Adam. He has told you, all of humankind, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice. And again, the words here are very simple, very common. It's a word that prophets have had in their mouth for a long time. And it's not only about making sure that you don't do things that are evil. There are many times where they complain against merchants that have false weights, uh, sort of the equivalent of putting your thumb on the scale as you weigh something at the butcher shop, or other ways of cheating folks that have come down through the ages. But it's more than that. It's also recognizing that you can't ignore the plight of somebody else. You can't become so distracted with your own life that the only thing you care about is what's going on with you. Do justice. And so not only are you a person that doesn't cheat, but you're also a person that cares that others receive justice. And then the second phrase, love kindness. Now the first word there for love is a word that we use often in our language. Um, boy, I just love going to Ollie's and uh, well usually I try to get the smallest of the Arctic blasts but uh, 
I'm not always successful. Sometimes I get the bigger kind. Um, and that word is also used in the Hebrew Bible for obsession. It's a word that refers to being passionate about something. And then the next word that's translated as kindness is a word that we don't have a ready equivalent for. Sometimes it's translated as steadfast love. Sometimes it's translated as mercy. In this case, they use the word kindness because, well, it just turns out to be bad English to say, and to love steadfast love. That sounds weird. You don't want to do that as an English construction. And so they come up with the word kindness. This is a word that most often talks about God's compassion towards God's people, the way that God has constantly cared for the people of God. It's the most uh, gracious, affectionate description of love that we can imagine. Love, kindness. Uh, you know, that sounds almost like a radical suggestion right now. As so much of the society is polarized, so much of the time we spend uh, complaining about people with other views or who have other ideas about how to live. Uh, it's incredible the number of people who have been threatened after a legal decision or after uh, taking some kind of action, election judges being threatened, uh, their names showing up on the internet. What, what kind of uh, society do we become when we cease to have kindness as a concern? Love, kindness. Love, steadfast love. Love, mercy, all of those words could be inserted in there and each one of them reminds us to think with God's mind, to love with God's heart, to be the people that God wants us to be. And to walk humbly with your God. Um, Oftentimes, humility is seen as sort of weakness or being endlessly self-deferential, uh, saying that you're bad at something when you're really good at it. And clearly, the scriptures never mean that. The scriptures mean knowing that others' needs can take first place sometimes in your life. And most of all, your need to follow God and not try to lead becomes paramount in our walk of faith. To walk humbly means to look for God's guidance, to seek to go where God leads us. This is never, never easy. And I think many times, um, and this is true for me, too, that when you come to church, you want it to feel familiar. You want it to feel comfortable. You want it to be a place where things feel good. And we all want that. But it's also important to remember that sometimes we need that jolt. We need the prod. We need the question asked about where our lives are going and what are we doing? And do we come just because it seems comfortable or do we come because we are seeking to follow where God leads us? Um, I heard a great quote. I'm sure you're familiar with it. It goes like, if nothing changes, Nothing ever changes. And I think as a church, if we want to be a place that is more open, more dynamic, 
more attractive of visitors, we get to recognize that from time to time, changes will occur. And it might shake up that feeling of being comfortable, being familiar. Um, I did this deliberately, and I think I did it because I know I'm leaving in a couple of weeks. <laughs> but, I mean, nothing is more familiar than the words of the Lord's Prayer. I mean, most of the time we are so comfortable with those words that they can come out of our mouth almost without thinking about it. And I keep thinking about what an odd thing it says about God to say, lead us not into temptation. Is that really what God would do if we didn't ask him not to? I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think that's a great translation. And I really like the one we're using right now, which says, save us from the time of trial. And to know that God can be with us in those times when we are stretched and tried and pushed, um, it's a great comfort. It's a great comfort. And it, I like the idea of God's presence in our time of trial much better than the idea that God might lead us into temptation just to see how we'll do. Uh, I'll just throw that out there. Uh, you think about that. We'll work on it. It's, it's a change. But sometimes in following God, in walking humbly with God, Changes like that are very necessary. These, this familiar passage from Micah uh, shows up every week on our bullet. And it can become as worn out and trite and familiar as anything else we do in worship. But as we remember it as the conclusion of the court case. God brings charges against Israel. Israel responds. And finally the prophet says, don't you know in your heart that the faith is an easy thing to do? Easy thing to know what to do. A hard thing to execute. So may we do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with our God. And when our faith seems hard or confusing or we feel like we have lost our way, surely these can be guidance for us in the most difficult of times. Let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. As we come to our prayers today, we have a prayer request for Karen Hackbarth. Uh, she had cataract surgery and has another one scheduled. Uh, Bill Crump's family asked for continued prayer as he recovers in rehab in Aurora. Uh, Miss Bibbs 
asks prayers for my health to improve. Teresa Hagenbaugh requests prayers of healing for friends who have COVID. And Barbara North makes the comment that she is feeling blessed today. She is now negative for COVID. She gives thanks for the thoughts and prayers of everyone during her illness. With these concerns in mind, let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray for those locked in circumstances beyond their control, restrained by oppressors and seeing no end to their captivity. May they discover hope buried in deepest suffering through Jesus Christ, who shared the weakness and despair of human life, yet gave even death a new outcome and brought resurrection from a closed tomb. We pray for the church set in the world to show how people belong together and how your gifts are given to be shared. Grant that as we feel for the rejection and voicelessness of others, we may meet Christ in them and bear witness to his transforming love. We pray for the communities in which we live and work, for people under stress and unable to deal with their difficulties, for those who seek comfort in ways which bring no help, for all who are anxious and fearful. Give us grace to show by our concern and actions how each is loved and valued by you. Gracious God, we bring before you the concerns raised this day. We pray with Barbara North with prayers of thanksgiving as she now tests negative for COVID. We hear Teresa's request for prayers for feeling of healing for friends who have COVID. We pray with Miss Bibbs for her health to improve and with Bill Crumb's family as they ask for continued prayers as he recovers. We pray for Karen Hackbarth as she recovers from surgery and faces surgery again. Hear us, gracious God, as we lift our own concerns before you now in the silence of our hearts. We remember those now hidden from us, but at home with you. We give thanks especially for those who have strengthened our weak faith, built up our trust in you, and by their lives have drawn us into the life of Christ. For the church triumphant, we give you thanks, and may we continue to learn from their gifts. And now, as we have been taught, we pray together, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us now offer our gifts to God.
Let us pray. God of abundance and steadfast love, you provide for us in ways we do not always know or recognize. You have pre prepared and provided for us since before we were born. Receive these tokens of our gratitude and bless them. May the gifts we return to you provide for others in a way that gives glory to you and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now go out into the world in peace. Hold fast to that which is good. Give to no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each one of you from this time forth and forevermore. And all God's people say,